Take your Bible and turn to the book of James. The book of James. I might move around too. So I'm going to have this mic just in case. Why God worked it out this way that I'm the anchor, I don't know. Because brother, I know what you mean. I feel like I'm the least of these. Pastor Billy Hill, I'm pastor at Rocky Mount Baptist Church, in Popeton. It's a Popeton address, but I never have figured that out yet because it's in between Oakburn and Burnsville. Oh, wow. But uh, I guess it's just the way the county lines run. And uh, so I've never understood the address being a Popeton address, Randy. Randy, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I grew up right here in Anson County. I grew up in Peachland, went to uh, Baldwin High School, graduated in 1976. Uh, used to run around with folks like Rocky Cocker, somebody you may know him, Tony High. Uh, used to run around with those guys growing up. Was always in church. But for years I lived the life. Went to the altar at age 12, but didn't get saved. Bye. And for years I lived a lie. Never dreamed God would call me to preach. I've had folks to that I've filled in before at other churches. One pastor said that even Moses was 80 before God called him. I was 50, but he always called me Moses after that. I thought it was just because of the gray hair. I didn't know it was because of my age. But as I was thinking, after Randy had called and I talked to him, I began to think and pray what God would have me to preach on. And, and, I, and I wanted to kind of stay with the theme of it being Revival Weekend. And as a pastor and, and these great pastors we've already heard, one of our greatest desires is to see our churches revived. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. We, we, we see it firsthand. And, and we, we, we mourn over it. We, we weep over it. We, we want we to have such a great desire to see God moved in our midst. And like Brother Randy said, we, we, they may not be, but 40, there may be 80 here today. It don't matter. We're here to preach God's word. And it don't matter if there were but two people here today. I preach the same as I were for 200 people here today. We need to draw close to God. That's right. That's right. And that's what James tells us. If you look at, look at James chapter 4, I'm going to start in verse 7. It says, Therefore, submit to God. Now, what is that therefore? Well, back up. It says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So, therefore, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. So how do we draw close to God? If we want to see true revival, it's going to take God's people coming back to God, drawing to God. And James tells us if we draw close to God, or if we draw nigh unto God, then he'll draw close to us. And just like my brother said a while ago, we saw in the end of 9 11 how the churches begin to fill up. But now during the pandemic, we see people getting away from church. We see people losing their faith. We even see pastors leaving the pulpit. And what we need is we need to, instead of running from God, we need to draw to God. And James gives us five suggestions here that I want to look at real quick. First thing we see is verse 7. He says, first thing we need to do is submit to God. When I looked at that word submit, I looked up the definition of submit. And submit means to yield oneself to the authority or the will of another. So who are we to submit to? We're to submit to God. His authority is His will that we need to submit to. In other words, we need to surrender. 
I'm talking about total surrender. Yes. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about being a Sunday morning Christian. I'm not talking about when you open your Bibles and the preacher says open your Bible on Sunday morning, then you go home and lay it down and you never open it again. How are you going to know who God is if you don't read about Him? How are you going to know we're supposed to, how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to raise our family and how we're supposed to treat one another if we don't know what God's Word says? The first thing He says we're to submit. We're to realize that we need the forgiveness of God. We need the forgiveness of God. And then we surrender our lives and follow him and we give him our all. Yes. Yes. Folks, we're in a state in our nation. We're just halfway given God. That's right. Yes, sir. We, we got Christians in the churches that we don't want to give our all because people may look at us funny. I got a dear lady in the church and she don't mind worshiping. She grew up in the gospel. And I see the other folks in the church, how they'll, they'll look at her kind of funny when she gets too happy. And I'm like, praise him. Go ahead, praise him. You know, I don't want no rocks crying out for me. And she don't mind praising him. And I thank God for it. We need to give God our all. Surrender our all to him. And that's easier said than done, isn't it? Have you, watched, have you watched any ball games lately? Yes, sir. And the stadium is just packed. What are we surrendering to? What are we surrendering to? James says, first thing to do is submit to God. And then secondly, he says in verse 7 also, that we're to resist the devil. <coughs> if I sin, I can't blame nobody but Billy. If you sin, you can't blame nobody but yourself. Any, anybody, any older folks here remember Flip Wilson? Yeah. Remember Flip Wilson? He used to say, the devil made me do it. No, the devil doesn't make you sin. Right. He'll, he'll, he'll tempt you. He'll put those things. we got to remember one thing, folks. And, and I'm going to preach a little bit here because Satan was one of the most adored angels in heaven. Right. He was a beautiful angel. He was kind of the praise leader of heaven. Right. And, and Satan... He don't make things look ugly. He makes it look beautiful. And that's how he tempts people. He made that fruit of that tree look beautiful to Adam and Eve. And that's when the fall began for man. And had they only resisted the devil. And many times we do those beautiful things. And many times being, we may, we may only be on the computer. You know, Pornography is, is so rampant right now in our world. And many times there's many men who sit on their computer and they'll do pop-ups that come up. And instead of resisting it, they'll, they'll click on it. And before they know it, they're hooked on it. And if only we would resist the devil when we were offered that first drink, many men would not be alcoholics today. And if only people... You know, I, I can't understand, and, and I do understand in a sense because I've been there in my past, but how folks can take a drug like like crack cocaine or or meth, or, or meth and, and, and knowing what it could do to the bodies and put it in their bodies right. and become addicted. Right. Right. It sounds easy, don't it? Just resist it. But we can't do it on our own. That's We've got to trust God. That comes to go back to my first point. We've got to surrender to Him. We got to be willing to draw close to God. And the Bible says when we do that, He'll draw close to us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Satan. He wants to destroy your families. He wants to destroy the homes. He wants to destroy the church. But God said His word will not come back to it. Like you said, brother, in the end, we win. Yes, sir. In the end, we win. Right. We win. Resist the devil. Thirdly, in verse 8, we're to cleanse our hands and purify our hearts. Let's look at what it says. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. 
In other words, we are to lead a pure life. Yes, sir. Now, how do we do that? How do we, as, as human beings, live a pure life? We don't without God. Because God is the only thing good and pure. I never forget how professor of improvement. He said he was an English professor. And, and, and he, you know, I'm, I'm from Madison County. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a really scholar by no means. But he says, he said, if somebody asks you how you're doing, you don't say, I'm doing good. You say, I'm doing well. He said, because only one is good, and that's God. Now, I wasn't, and, and, I, and I, my argument was, I wasn't saying I was good. I was saying I was doing good. But I've learned, but I still do that today, Randy. Somebody asked me, how you I'm doing well, because that's what he taught me. And, I, and it makes me sound a little smarter than I actually am. Anyway, we're to cleanse our hands and purify our hearts. We're to live a pure, holy life before God, and we cannot do that without God. We cannot do that without drawing to Him. Going toward God, we we got we've seen so many people leave the churches during the pandemic. We've seen so many people have lost their faith. And again, like I said earlier, we've seen so many pastors who have left the ministry. And it's a crying shame. I prayed for when God began when God first called me to preach. I prayed over and over, God, please let me never let me lose the fire. Amen. Never let me lose the desire to get to your word. Many pastors have left the ministry. Right. I love what you said earlier about maybe it's God's way of weeding out those who aren't really saved. I haven't thought about that. And you're right, we need to go after them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need to share the truth with them. There's too many pastors. I thank God for all these men I've heard this morning because they're preaching the truth. And we need more pastors in the pulpit that are willing to preach the truth. But we don't need pastors that are going to tickle our ears. We don't need pastors who are cowardly and afraid to preach the truth because they're afraid they might lose their job. I told one of my deacons not long ago, I don't preach to please man, I preach to please God. Amen. So we need to cleanse our hands and purify our hearts. We need to, we need to be cleansed of our sin. We need to replace it with God's purity and God's goodness and God's mercy and God's grace. We need to draw close to God, folks. We need to draw close to God instead of running away from Him. We need to run to Him. Fourth thing that James shows us is in verse 9. It says we need to mourn and weep over our sins. Look at it again. Let it and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. We need to mourn and weep over our sin. Let me ask you a question. When is the last time? When is the last time that you mourned and wept over your sin? I mean, seriously. When is the, the last time that you grieved over your sin? When is the last time you expressed really deep sorrow over your sin? When's the last time you wept over a lost loved one? When's the last time you wept over your grandchildren and your children and your neighbors and your co-workers and your friends? Folks, there's people dying and going to hell every day. But we need, even us as pastors, we need to continue to draw close to God that we may preach the word of God. Right. That folks will hear the truth. And we need, we need people at the altars. We need people to come to the altars and begin to weep and mourn yes. over their sin yes. and over the sin of the world and weep over their lost loved ones. Yes. I thought about my grandchildren and my children. And I thought, I don't know if I can bear the one of them dying and and me knowing they're lost. As a pastor, that would be heartbreaking. Yes. But as a parent, period, yes. that should break your heart this morning. Yes. You should be weeping over your children and over your sins. Yes. 
instead of playing around with it. You know, when we talk about resisting the devil, many times we go to the devil because it looks so beautiful and, and we, we get involved and, and, and like you said, we, we start up here, we start up here and all of a sudden, boom. We need more people weeping and mourning. The last thing that James shows us, I didn't even look at that clock one time. I hope I'm okay. I blame it when I can't see good. Verse 10, he says, we're to humble ourselves. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. But I want to back up. I missed something while ago. God just showed it to me. When we do resist the devil, did you see what it said? He said, he'll flee from us. He'll flee from us. You, you see, when we're, when we're drawn close to God, Satan knows who God is. The demons know who God is. The demons know the name of Jesus. And the Bible says they tremble. So we resist him when we're drawing close to God and we're right there with God and God's right there with us. And by the way, he never leaves us. We're the ones who turn our back on him. We're right there with God and God's with us. The Satan, and we resist him. He has to leave. He has to leave. Stop inviting Satan into the churches and into your homes. And then humble yourselves. Humble yourselves. I hear people all the time, and you see it on Facebook and social media, people saying, we need to pray for God to heal our land, and, we, and I'm praying that God will get rid of this COVID-19, and God promised he would heal our land, didn't he? But there's a stipulation there. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, put aside our pride, will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. In other words, we need to repent. We need a revival. We need God's church. We need God's people coming to our name repenting. I'm talking about true repentance. I'm not talking about turning over a new leaf. I'm talking about repentance, turning from your sin. And he says this here. If we want to draw close to God, we got to humble ourselves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. By the way, aren't we supposed to look like Jesus? Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't come with a bunch of pride and say, I'm, I'm your king now. Right. He came in humility yes, sir. Yes, sir. as a servant. Yes, sir. We need to humble ourselves. Hey. If you'll flip over one book over to 1 Peter. Chapter 5. I want to end with this this morning. All I'm hearing today about, from a lot of people is a lot of doom and, and, and gloom and, and, and some crazy, you hear, you hear some crazy stories from folks. You know, uh, I had one guy to tell me that they're going to bring our military home and turn them all into half robots. Uh, I've had folks to tell me, and I don't, I don't say this to hurt anybody's feelings. I, really, I don't. But I've had people tell me that they think the vaccine is part of the mark of the beast. And, and, I, and I want to tell them, get in your Bible. <laughs> get in your Bible. And we hear all these crazy, crazy things. I don't know who these people are listening to. But I listen to God because God that told us these things were going to take place before Jesus comes back for the church. More than ever, we need to draw close to God. And, 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 and uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, starting at verse 6, is that therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober. I'm not just talking about alcohol either. Anything that will cloud your mind from serving God. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Satan's at work. He don't stop. 
Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by their brotherhood in the world. Resist the devil. How do we draw close to God? By running away from the devil. How do we draw close to God? By weeping over our sins and getting into God's word. All of us pastors, we see it happening in our churches. We see it happening in churches all around us. How the numbers have fell off. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to live in fear, Brother Randy. Fear is not of God. I just want to trust my God. Yes, he gives us common sense to use. But I'm going to draw close to God and watch what he does in our churches. I want to draw close to God. I want to be more like Jesus. I don't want to let what's happening in our world deter me from serving him. More than anything, more than anything, the churches should be filling up. We need to draw close to God. The Bible says he'll draw close to you. You want to feel God more? You want to see him more? Then today, start the day drawing nigh unto him. God, we thank you. Oh, God, help us. God, we need a great revival. And God, I know it comes from your people repenting and realizing who you are. You're the great I am. You have power over all things. God, help us as, as your children realize that the only power Satan has over us today is the power we give him. God, help us to draw close to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.